Term insurance or whole life insurance? Which is best for you? Is it buy term and invest the difference like Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman and all the Primerica agents of the world would have you believe? Or is whole life insurance the way to go? Ultimately, if you talk to 50 different advisors, not only are you gonna get different opinions from everybody, but they're all gonna have different opinions as to why they believe what they believe. So in this video, I'm here to end the debate and be able to walk you through a process of why I believe what I believe. And I think there's so much common sense in my level of processing behind this, that if you ultimately want to achieve a specific goal and you have something you want to accomplish in life, I believe you should put yourself at the center of that success and you should build a system that guarantees that you will actually achieve your goals. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna walk you through my system on how I think you should process this decision mentally and emotionally, and ultimately then how do you execute tactically be able to accomplish those goals. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. That way you're notified every time I launch a new video. Well, let's go. What is up, cash flow hackers? It's Chris with Life 180, and we are talking about term versus whole life insurance. Trying to end the debate here. I've done some videos on this before, but you know what? I've, I've had a conversation with somebody earlier today, and I wanted to create this video to basically end the debate, to lay it out. What is the process? How do you, no, let, let, let me put it this way. How do I eliminate my opinions, my perspectives, of course, I'm gonna add those in here, but it's not about my opinions and perspectives. Let's get rid of the emotional reasons and let's just focus on the logic. Let's focus on you, your goals, thinking about why do you even want these products to begin with? Why do you want life insurance, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through this process and that is where we're gonna start. The question is, why do you want life insurance? Now, when you talk to Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman and you hear them and you read their books and you watch their videos, they're gonna tell you, buy term and invest the difference. You, you are gonna grow through life. The only reason you want term insurance at all is to make sure that your family is taken care of if something happens to you. And so as you age, you're not, your, your need for insurance is gonna diminish. You're not going to need that insurance to take care of your kids, to take care of your spouse, and, and to pay off your debts and all these different things. As you get older, you should ultimately go through life and you should have it all covered. And, and so you should be able to quote unquote self-insure. I'm going to talk about that later, but you're, that is ultimately, I think what's important is to think about why do you want insurance, right? That's the first thing. But when you add on to that, what I think is really important to understand is that what you need and why you want life insurance is ultimately going to change. If you understand the different ways that these products can impact your life. And so your needs and your wants right now are going to be vastly different than what they are 20 years from now. So what we're doing is we're planning and thinking short term, but we are not addressing our long term needs. And a lot of times these these financial uh, personalities and I get it, I fall into that camp. But a lot of times the people who come out with these concepts are, are, are thinking that, you know, they're giving you strategies and all your long term wants and needs are going to be taken care of if you just kind of like handle your stuff and pay your debts and all these things. But the reality is nothing could be further from the truth. And there's a lot of holes in, in that philosophy. And so when you think about why do I want it and what are my needs going to be and my wants going to be down the road in the future. And then you work into the fact that like, you have to think about ultimately what financial challenges am I trying to solve? And like I said, right now, maybe it's just making sure your wife, your kids or your spouse is, are taken care of. Your debts are paid if something tragic happens to you. But I promise you, as you get older, you're going to have different financial challenges. It's going to be, you know, when you hit retirement, how are you going to deal with market volatility when you're no longer earning income and, and you have to take income out? How are you going to deal with like long-term care planning? How are you going to deal with making sure that you have control of your medical directive? Like, I don't know if you know this, but most bankruptcies in retirement happen because of medical bills. What if you could have a solution that would solve those problems for you? How do you plan on leaving a legacy to the next family or to the next generation in the most tax advantaged way possible? Sure, term insurance will take care of your family in case of emergency, but if we stop thinking about what we need on a, on a scarcity level mindset and I'm from a, a bare minimum baseline, and we start thinking about what we want and what we were put on this earth here to do and, and leaving the next generation better off and actually imp implementing financial principles that could guarantee that my family was gonna be in a better position, not just financially, but I could leave them with principles that would leave them better off. You know, isn't that something that would be attractive? And to me, that's where the rubber hits the road with my positioning. We gotta get beyond the death benefit mindset of life insurance and start thinking about 
the long-term benefits of the living benefits, the acceleration of the death benefit potential, and the tax efficient legacy planning that whole life insurance can bring to the table. So with that, there's a couple concepts that I really want to touch on that uh, a lot of these personalities talk about. Talk about not being overinsured. Well, I want to tell you, and I want to, and I'm going to go into this deeper, but before I get into it, I want to state, you cannot be overinsured. I think it's, it's, it's really important to understand that you have what's called a human life value. The insurance company is going to look at you. They're going to look at your situation, your income, your life, your debts, your family, your obligations, and they're going to look at you and they're going to assign to you a human life value. They're not going to insure you a dime more than that human life value. And so if the insurance company is going to limit you to that number, that is an actuarial number basically stating if you live a long, happy, healthful, fruitful life, what is it going to be like? What, what is that going to be worth if you didn't even improve from where you were right now? It's one of the reasons a lot of people get a lot of policies and whole life insurance is because they insure their human life value and then they insure what their current human life value is, right? And so what's happening as they grow through life, their human life value expands because they expanded and their income opportunity expands. And you know, that is what it is. So what do they have to do? They have to go get more insurance to cover that human life value. And so that's how people, uh, you know, like Nelson Nash ended up with over 70 policies throughout their life because as our human life value expands, so there too does our ability to get more and more insurance. And I'm going to get into why it's important that we take that into consideration. The other thing that I want to talk about is the fact that you can't be self-insured. You're either insured or you're not insured. The idea of being self-insured is delusional. Uh, we can have all of these things like we're thinking about death benefit, right? And I think a lot of times when Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman talk about, you know, hey, go through life when your kids are gone and they've flown the coop and, and they've gone to college and now they're working and they're self-dependent uh, uh, and, and they're no longer reliant on you. And maybe you follow the Dave Ramsey plan to the, to the max and you've got your mortgage paid off and you have no credit card debt and you have no auto debt and you have no debt at all. And you have, you know, a million dollars in your 401k and things are good, right? And, and you feel good and you have no debt and you get to retirement, you got social security and you got your 401k coming out and you feel really just comfortable about your life. And then you hit 66 years old and you retire. 65, maybe a couple of years into retirement, 66, 67, 68, you get sick. You get diagnosed with cancer and you get there and you've got all this retirement and you know what? Your health insurance just isn't gonna cover it. Or maybe, maybe um, you, you get there and because of the, the cancer you got, the insurance company is telling you that you're just stuck. You have to follow these treatments. You got to do this chemo, this radiation, do things on their terms. But upon, uh, upon your research and your due diligence, you've realized that there are other treatments that you'd rather do. And they say, no, you can't do it. But the insurance is only going to cover this. And you say, well, I, I have to make a choice. Am I going to dig into my 401k? And am I going to, I'm going to take that as earned income and pay taxes on it and have to liquidate 20% of my retirement income? Uh, am I, am I, or, or am I going to like go through and do this treatment, right? To me, you know, what happens then if you end up in a situation where you need long-term care, if you become disabled, if you, you know, uh, need access to long-term assisted living, how is that going to eat into your retirement needs? And do you have enough to cover you? Or are you going to have to scrimp and scrape and, and reduce your standard of living or become a burden to your family, right? Like that, at the end of the day, the, the plan that, you know, you're going to just be self-insured when you hit retirement leaves a lot of variables out of the equation that are just not taken into consideration. Now, I know he'll say you should get disability insurance. You should do all these things. But at the end of the day, when you, when you do the math about comparing whole life insurance compared to term insurance and investing the difference, and then adding long-term care to that cost, that is a massive expense. That long-term care insurance is super expensive. So we have to be thinking about what are the long-term goals and you cannot be self-insured. So as we go through this process, the idea, I really am going to challenge this, the idea that you cannot be self-insured. You either have insurance or you don't. And if you don't, you're exposed. And I think the biggest misunderstanding about whole life insurance is what role whole life insurance can play for you. When you compare it to term insurance, you know, it is what it is. Like term insurance is death insurance for the most part. And whole life insurance is way more than just death insurance. And I think that's where people just don't have a full understanding. And I, I think by the end of this video, when you have a better understanding, 
it's gonna shift your perspective. All right, so I got three rules when it comes to your money and with your insurance. And these three rules go across all your personal finances. And ultimately it, it is designed, these three rules are designed to put you in a position where you can achieve your goals and objectives in your life on a predictable basis. Ultimately get there on a guaranteed basis with the only variable being your willingness and ability to execute on these rules. And so the first rule, is you want to put yourself at the center of your own success. Now, what does that mean? So I'm a big believer uh, if, and, and we have a, a list of belief statements with Life 180 and, and I'm a big believer. And one of those belief statements is that everything you do, every financial decision you make and every financial strategy you implement should get you predictably closer to your goals and objectives. And my, my question to you is, is what you're doing with your money doing that. Like I know a lot of people say, I'm, I'm growing my money. I've got, I've got money in a 401k. I've got money in an IRA. Maybe I've got a Roth. I've got this, I've got that. I've got some rental properties. But did you really stop and think about and reverse engineer and think about where do you want to go? What, what is the end goal? What is the end objective? I, I would argue, stop thinking about retirement and start thinking about financial freedom. Start thinking about financial independence. Start thinking about cash flow planning and that future cash flow planning and your ability to actually achieve the freedom and the independence and, and to realize that you know, you're, you're stuck in this box a lot of times, a lot of people thinking about like, I gotta work until I'm 65 and retire and they're not thinking about like, hey, if I've just gotta earn $10,000 a month, like how do I get to this $10,000 a month income level? And is what I'm doing right now in alignment and correlated to those goals? And, and could I, what if, right? Like I watched a movie the other day and there, that was a big thing. What if, what if you could achieve that goal? What if you could actually have $10,000 of passive income, $10,000 a month of cash flow to replace your income and you could do it by 45 or 50 instead of 65? How much would that impact your life? Your ability to show up differently in life for your family, for your community, for your church, for your legacy, right? Like that, that to me is everything. So is your money in alignment with your values and beliefs? And are you putting yourself at the center of your own success? That's my question to you. And that's my first rule is saying that you need to do that. The second rule is that you need to ensure your entire human life value. Let me explain here. What is human life value? So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to break this down and I'm going to show you a couple things. So one of, one of the things I think is really important to understand. So when we look, I want to give a couple examples. What, what the insurance company is going to do is they're going to look at you and they're going to look at your life and they're going to say, all right, Chris, I'm just going to use myself as an example. Um, so they're going to say, Chris here is 43 years old. He's got three kids, spouse. He's got a mortgage. Um, you know, he's got some other assets, he's got some other debts and, you know, they're going to go down through this and they're going to figure out, uh, Chris makes, let's just say it's 200,000 a year just for a round number. And like, let's just say that this is just, you know, what's going on, right? They're going to look at this and they're going to say, all right, well, based on the fact that he's 43, um, he's got three kids that are going to need college. Let's say it's 200 K for each kid for college. And that is an obligation. So that's 600 K. I have my spouse who's not working, so I need to make sure that I have, uh, you know, this 200K per year of lifestyle that is taken care of. And I wanna make sure that she's, uh, you know, included in this. I don't wanna pay off my mortgage. I just wanna focus on this 200K lifestyle, right? I don't wanna, I don't really care about the other debts. What I care about is the cash flow that goes along with it, right? Like, and so if everybody's a little bit different, if I have my life set up, so I have 200K in, in cash flow and it's happening passively. Um, you can make an argument that you, you don't really need insurance at that point in time. But I would say, even though once you really align with this and you resonate with what I'm saying, it'll make sense and be like, wow, even if I don't need it, I want it because I want to maximize my human life value possible. So in that situation, so let's just focus on this 200K of income at a, as a 43 year old, okay? As a 43 year old, 200K per year of income, that 200K per year, the life insurance company is gonna say, all right, we're gonna give Chris 30 times his income in insurance. That is his human life value. 
So 30 times 200K is $6 million. So an insurance company, if I had no insurance, and if I looked at this and I was making 200K, all things being said, this is the baseline, right? There may be other things I have going on that would allow me to get more insurance, but they're gonna look at this and they're gonna say, all right, your human life value is $6 million. So what I have to look at, if I had no insurance and I was just starting and if this is my human life value, I have to say, all right, this is, I have to take, I have to take a step back and I have to ask myself, what do I wanna be remembered as, right? Because the idea of like, all right, what Dave Ramsey would do, let's just do this. What Dave Ramsey would do is say, hey, Chris, listen, your kids are gonna grow up, they're gonna grow old, they're gonna get older, and so you got three kids that have 600K in college total. You got a million dollar house, mortgage, let's just say. And maybe, uh, you know, when you have all your debts and your cars and everything paid, you know, your, your wife might need, uh, you know, a couple, uh, like, fifty, sixty thousand $60,000 a year to live on because you're not going to have any debts. Like, and he would say, well, really, does she need much more than that? Does she need to have more than that? And I'd say, well, Dave, maybe she doesn't need it, but you know what? As a husband and as a, as a man who is trying to provide for my family uh, and as somebody who, who believes it's my responsibility to make sure that what I want to happen when I'm alive is going to happen even if something tragic happens to me and I don't want my wife to have to remarry uh, based on financial need, that, that if, if she remarries, it's based on love. And I don't even want to think about that, honestly. It's kind of sickening. Um, but like, it is what it is, right? And so what Dave would say is like, hey, if you get a million dollars of, of insurance above and beyond that, it doesn't matter your income. You have all these needs met and you're, you know, it's good to go. So you shouldn't need more than 2.6 million in this, in this situation. The problem is, that leaves you 3.4 million short of your human life value. And, and this is the opportunity for real legacy. So when we get into this $6 million of human life value, this is talking about maximizing this human life value because of it being our biblical, and I believe just duty on this earth to leave the next generation better off than what we have. Now, what I also believe is by focusing on this, it is always like really encouraging us to live into our greatest human life value. I know human nature a lot of times is, you know, to get comfortable and, you know, when you have all these things paid off and, uh, you know, you're debt free and so on and so forth, it's, you can kind of lose your purpose, right? You, you think like, hey, it's a bit of a self-serving way. I've taken care of my kids. I've, I've taken care of the mortgage. I've got the money saved. I'm good to go. My family's taken care of. Like, like that's a very scarcity mindset. I've done the bare minimum to take care of them. I haven't really executed on what could possibly be should I live a long, healthy, happy, fruitful, productive life, right? Like that's what this is about. And so when we look at the six million, what I need to do is I need to say, uh, I need to take a look at my cash flow first. How much free and clear cash flow do I have that I can save every month? Every month or every year, depending on how your cash flow comes in for entrepreneurs and real estate investors, I, it could be every year, potentially. But what's your, what's your cash flow, right? And then what we have to do is we wanna, we wanna break that out and we wanna make sure to meet your human life value. And so what do I mean by that? We're gonna break that cash flow and we're gonna split it off and we're gonna do a combination of term and whole life. Now, what am I doing here? I wanna maximize as much into whole life as possible, and I'm gonna explain why in a second, and then I'm gonna, and, and, and we're gonna save, and we're gonna design that policy for maximum accumulation, maximum cash efficiency, and maximum living benefits, that's ultimately in the blend of those things, and then we're gonna supplement it, and we're gonna fill in the need for a human life value with term insurance, because uh, you know, that is what it is. We're, because we want to meet it and it's going to be the cheapest way to do it. And I truly believe that, you know, a lot of people think I'm against term. I love term insurance because of the fact of what I'm talking about. But the thing with term insurance is that there's so many people out there who will tell you to get the cheapest of cheap term. I'm going to tell you to get convertible term. If you knew how many people I've talked to in my life that have 
had a term policy for 10 to 15 or 20 years. And then as a term policy is going to expire, they get sick a year or two years beforehand. And then, you know, maybe they get cancer and then they die right after the term insurance expired. You, you probably bust into tears. It is, it is one of the reasons I'm so passionate about what I do and sharing the stories that I share is because I've seen it. I've talked to people. I've been on the phone, cried with people. It's, it's really, really heart wrenching. Some of the stories that are out there. When you buy the cheapest of cheap term, it's not convertible. When you buy convertible term insurance, what happens is you lock in that human life value. And during the term period of that insurance, you have the contractual right to be able to convert the term insurance to whole life insurance on a guaranteed basis without underwriting. So if anything tragic happens to you in that period of time, A, you're covered and B, if you get sick, you can convert it to a permanent policy locking in that you're going to be able to insure this full human life value forever, no matter what. And it makes sure that I'm a big believer, whatever plan that you do should make sure what you want to happen will happen when you want it to happen, whether you're here to see it or not. And when you really resonate with that and you understand it to be true, well then I think this all starts to make sense and come together. And so, so that's that. Now the, the next thing that I want to talk about is the concept about life insurance, not just being death insurance. So, when we talk about saying, all right, let's look at our cash flow and start jamming as much money of our cash flow into whole life insurance and supplementing the gap with term insurance, you could see here in a situation, um, you know, this, this would be just a full example. Like this would be an example of somebody who maybe has a uh, human life value or like $100,000 a year uh, with $10,000. So their human life value would be 30 times that would be like 3 million human life value in this situation. Well, you could see in this, in this scenario, you know, 3 million is not very much, you know, 3 million, uh, gets you 180, uh, or the, the $10,000 cash flow gets you to $180,000. So we're going to need about 2.8 million of term, right? But we want to buy convertible term to mark up the gap. Now, why are we doing this? $10,000, what this is going to do this $10,000 right away, you got $7,000, uh, in net cash value almost. And by year 10, you've put in a hundred thousand, you're going to have $104,000 cash. And this is basically one year of income in this situation for emergency fund, right? And I would argue you want to get to about two years of income. So by year 15, you're going to have two years of income, which would suffice to have, or I guess that's year 16. You'd have two years of income for a year of emergency fund and a year of opportunity fund. That's one of the things that we, we kind of show and plan. Now, this is basically a bond account on steroids. It's a savings account on steroids because it's going to get bond like returns with savings, like liquidity with ancillary benefits. And all the while you can accelerate these death benefit riders while you're in retirement. If anything tragic happens to you, this is covering it. And it's also going to protect you against inflation. There's all sorts of good things that happen here, but this is one of the things that I talk about all the time is that you want to make sure that you're thinking about your human life value. You're maximizing the whole life insurance. You're, you're filling in the need and the gap with term insurance. And like Dave Ramsey always says, you need to start with an emergency fund. Well, this is the best emergency fund in the world because it's getting each dollar talking about financial efficiency. It's getting each dollar to perform multiple functions, right? So each dollar is taking care of some life insurance need is taking care of savings taking care of long-term care needs, like living the living benefits side of it. It's like a catastrophic medical protection. Each dollar, like he will, he'll go out in this and he'll say, well, you know, Chris, it makes no sense. Like whole life insurance is the, is, is a ripoff. It's it, the only person that benefits is the company. I don't know about you, but like if you were to go there and say, I'm going to spend $10,000, and, and still have $7,000 almost liquid. That's basically $3,000 to get all these other benefits that I'm talking about from a long-term perspective. And you lock that in. And by the way, net net basis, you're ahead starting in year 10. Like this becomes the biggest no brainer in the world when you really understand it. Now I will back Dave Ramsey up and say that most of the time, uh, he doesn't like whole life insurance because most life insurance agents, quite frankly, just don't understand what they don't understand. And so instead of a, 6,700 there, there's a big fat zero there, right? Because it's not designed properly. 
agents don't design it properly, they don't build in the paid up additions. So this $180,000 would be level, it would never increase. And you know, what we do here is we always create this efficiency. And you know, all the people that say, well, you don't get to keep the uh, cash, the insurance company keeps cash value, you keep the death benefit. Well, check this out. You got, let's just call it seven. So you got seven minus 180,000. You got $180,000 of death benefit minus seven. That's 173,000 of death benefit. Okay. So now we go out, the policy's grown to 104 and we say, all right, 349 is the death benefit. So yeah, when you die, the insurance company is going to keep the 104, but you have 349 minus 104. That is five, four, two forty-five. So you actually have more death benefit than what you started. You have about $75,000 more in death benefit now than when you started. Yeah, they're going to keep the cash value, but you're getting more death benefit than what you started with. And the reason they keep the cash value is that way they can give you the full 349 it as a tax free benefit rather than saying, Hey, we're going to give you the 245 as a death benefit. And then we're going to give you the 104 and we're going to have to charge you for that as a tax, right? Like a savings account. That is the benefit for it, right? We have to think about these long-term needs. We have to think about what our short-term needs are from a liquidity perspective, from a banking perspective, from a financial efficiency perspective, thinking long-term when we're in our thirties right here, a lot of times people aren't thinking about what life's going to look like in their 60s. But when you do this, it not only solves your needs for liquidity, your emergency fund, it's a forced savings account, but it also is getting you to force whether you're doing it intentionally or not. It's putting you in a position so you're handling your long term needs. And I always kind of tell people you cannot serve solve long term problems with short term thinking and the buy term and invest. The difference idea is short term thinking. Yes, you're thinking about investing. I get it. And you're thinking about investing for retirement, but it's not focusing on solving all of the different problems that you are inevitably going to encounter throughout life and taking those risks off the table. Right? And so that's, that's really important to understand. And then I'm just going to reiterate one more time is the living benefits, right? So living benefits. It also called ABRs. Accelerated death benefit riders. Okay. So if you become critically, chronically, or terminally ill in a lot of situations, you have access to a portion of the death benefit tax free so you can utilize it for whatever you want while you're alive. I've had clients that have had pancreatic cancer, literally that have said, Hey, I'm giving up. I don't, I don't believe I can, I could beat this. I'm going to take my whole family on a two month trip around the world and I'm going to enjoy what I have left. Cause I have it. And even after that, they're going to still have some money to inherit. So that's good. And then I've had my father-in-law who I've shared the story with, who also had pancreatic cancer and um, was given three months to live with a seven and a half centimeter tumor on his pancreas that spread to his liver. Um, and, and it was just a terminal diagnosis. And they said there were the best radiation and chemo would give him to maybe a year, but his quality of life would be horrible. Well, two years later, he's alive. He's playing golf four days a week all because he had access to capital and all because he was able to afford alternative treatments and not just follow traditional like medical advice, right? Like, and I'm not saying that's for everybody, but I'm saying control is what it's all about. Thinking about all the variables on the table that are going to happen in life. And it's easy when we're young and we have kids and families and I get it. I'm there right now. And you're thinking about like, how do I get my dollars to go as far as possible with each situation? Well, I got news for you. Like, you have to think about that, but you got to think about it from a long-term perspective, not just while your kids are at the house, not just while, you know, you're raising a young family. I promise you there's going to be life after the family's gone, after your kids are gone and grown, you're going to have grandkids and you're going to think about how, how do you leave a legacy and how do you start creating a legacy? Well, start thinking about that now, start thinking about it long-term now. And if you do think through those terms, you're not going to be thinking about like, oh, I'm able to just self-insure and take care of it and not going to need to leave my kids anything. I would argue you're going to want to leave your kids a lot, right? That's my mindset. And if you resonate with that, well, and by the way, I'm not saying you have to just leave it to your kids. I'm all about take this, get 6 million, 3 million, whatever your human life value is, get it, lock it in, have the beneficiary be a trust, get a trustee, set it up, set rules in place. You get to, you get to manage your money and manage your legacy from beyond the grave. That's what it's all about. And we have great relationships for estate planners, trust attorneys, all these people that can set this stuff up for you that we work with personally, happy to make an introduction if that's something you're interested in. So anyway, hopefully 
this demystifies the confusion about the buy term and invested difference concept and you know what is best for you if you have any questions comment in the comment section below if you haven't already make sure you like this video share this video subscribe hit the bell all that fun stuff Till next time, have a blessed, inspirational day. We'll talk soon. See ya.